Hey y'all, and welcome to this week's Womanly Wisdom Wednesday, episode 3.3. In this series, we are going through the book called The Power of a Praying Wife by Stormy O'Martian. This book teaches us why and how we should pray for our husbands. Disclaimer, I did not write this book. I am not in any way connected to this book other than I have read it and made my prayer binder based on this book. The content in this video is for educational, encouragement, and inspirational purposes only. The content in this video gives a simple and quick overview on introducing what this book is and what it teaches. And this week, we are going through the last section before we pray the last section called with all due respect so let's get started with all due respect we start out in ephesians chapter 5 verse 33 in the amplified however each man among you without exception is to love his wife as his very own self with behavior worthy of respect and esteem, always seeking the best for her with an attitude of loving kindness. And the wife must see to it that she respects and delights in her husband, that she notices him and prefers him and treats him with loving concern, treasuring him, honoring him, and holding him dear. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 16 in the Amplified. Then as the ark of the Lord comes into the city of David, I'm not sure how to pronounce her name, if it's Michal, I'm not sure. Saul's daughter, David's wife, looked down from the window above and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. And she felt contempt for him in her heart because she thought him undignified. Now, I'm not sure if you're really familiar with this, but King David was worshiping and praising the Lord. But she was judging him. Esther, chapter 1, verse 12 in the Amplified. But Queen Vashti, refused to come at the king's command, which was delivered to her by the eunuchs. So the king became extremely angry and burned with rage. Confess and repent. Confess to God any and all ill behaviors toward your husband. Then ask for God's forgiveness. So if you have like any frustration, any anger, any bitterness, any anything that you feel towards your husband, you need to tell God, let it go, and then ask for his forgiveness. Praying like this will free you to see your man's potential for greatness as opposed to his flaws. It will, it will enable you to say something positive that will encourage, build up, give life, and make the marriage better. Love is diminished if we dwell on the negatives. Love grows if we focus on the positive. When you have God's heart for your husband, you will be able to stay, see through new eyes. There are times when you can't understand where your husband is coming from, what he is feeling, and why he is doing the things that he does. Unless you have the discernment of God. Ask God to give it to you. Now the next scripture that we go through talks about this amazing woman. This woman that should be our example. She is the exemplary woman. It doesn't really start though until verse 10. So we will be going directly to verse 10. (coughs) 
and then it's divided into oh let's see here one two I think it's like three maybe four chunks so let's get started with this first chunk an excellent woman one who is spiritual capable intelligent and virtuous who is he who can find her her value is more precious than jewels and her worth is far above rubies or pearls the heart of her husband trusts in her with secure confidence and he will have no lack of gain no she can comforts encourages and does him only good and not evil all the days of her life. She looks for wool and flax and works with willing hands in delight. She is like the merchant ships, abounding with treasure. She brings her household's food from far away. She rises also while it is still night and gives food to her household and assigns tasks to her maids. Oops. Now it's verses 16 through 20 in the Amplified. She considers a field before she buys or accepts it, expanding her business prudently. With her profits, she plants fruitful vines in her vineyard. She equips herself with strength, spiritual, mental, and physical fitness for her God-given task and makes her arms strong. She sees that her gain is good. Her lamp does not go out, but it burns continually through the night. She is prepared for whatever lies ahead. She stretches out her hands to the distaff, and her hands hold the spindle as she spins wool into thread for clothing. She opens and extends her hand to the poor, and she reaches out her filled hands to the needy. Twenty-one through twenty-five in the Amplified. She does not fear the snow for her household, for all in her household are clothed in expensive scarlet wool. She makes herself coverlets, cushions, and rugs of tapestry. Her clothing is linen, pure and fine, and purple wool. Her husband is known in the city gates. When he sits among the elders of the land, she makes fine linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes to the merchants. Strength and dignity are her clothing and her position is strong and secure. And she smiles at the future, knowing that she and her family are prepared. Twenty six through thirty one in the Amplified. She opens her mouth in skillful and godly wisdom. And the teaching of kindness is on her tongue, giving counsel and instruction. She looks well to how things go in her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, happy, prosperous, to be admired her husband also, and he praises her, saying, Many daughters have done nobly and well with the strength of character that is steadfast in goodness. But you excel them all. Charm and grace are deceptive, and superficial beauty is vain. But a woman who fears the Lord reverently worshiping, obeying, serving, and trusting him with awe-filled respect. She shall be praised. 
give her of the product of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates of the city. This is an amazing woman, the kind of woman we can become only through God's enablement and our own surrendering. The bottom line is that she is a woman whose husband trusts her because she does him good and not evil all the days of her life. I believe the most important good a wife can do is pray for her husband. And then this is where we're going to stop for this week, only because the purposes of time. And so then next week, um, we'll go through the prayer and then our power tools. So for now, this concludes this week's Womanly Wisdom Wednesday. I pray that this series brings you encouragement and inspiration. Thank you so much for listening. Please remember that there is so much more nourishing wisdom in these pages other than what is shown to you in these podcasts. I highly encourage you to read the book. There is a link included in the description box below. Hashtag not sponsored. I don't make any money. I'm not affiliated. This is not an affiliate link or anything. If you have any questions or comments, post them below. If you like this video, please tap the thumbs up icon so it can be seen by even more people. It helps boost the algorithm. And so then the wisdom of God gets spread even more. Let's share the wisdom and help bring this encouragement and inspiration to others. Much love and may peace be with y'all. God bless.